Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Dr. Tran from the University of California, Irvine. I'm assistant professor of surgery. I'm a surgical oncologist who focuses on melanoma and uh, other uh, cutaneous um, cancers. I'm going to be talking about sentinel lymph node biopsy. I'll talk, I'll, you know, briefly talk about the historical perspective, the history of how we manage the lymph node basin. I'll, I'll discuss indications for sentinel lymph node biopsy, the literature um, on sentinel lymph node biopsy, and the surgeon's role in the, um, the surgeon evolving role in the treatment of melanoma. So to start, what are sentinel lymph node biopsy? Uh, sorry, so what are sentinel lymph nodes? So melanoma tends to metastasize first to the regional lymph nodes. Sentinel um, lymph nodes relies on the concept that different regions of the skin have distinct patterns of lymphatic drainage to the regional nodes. So for a given area of the skin, there's at least one specific lymph node that, that in that regional basin in which the lymphatic vessels drain, uh, first drain to. So sentinel lymph node is, is likely the first site of metastasis if it's gonna metastasize anywhere. So if the sentinel lymph node is negative on biopsy, the remaining lymph nodes in the mapped uh, basin are unlikely to contain disease. So just some historical perspective, the management of central lymph nodes um, have really evolved over the last six decades. So like many years ago, six de decades ago, um, surgeons were doing elective lymph node dissection, which really means taking all the lymph nodes in that basin. And uh, while that sounds like you take out any, everything, it carried a lot of morbidity. Um, unfortunately, with those patients back in the 60s, 70s, all, all, all these patients had pretty profound lymphedema, uh, which is a very serious complication. Um, so then there were several randomized controlled trials that looked at whether or not elective lymph node dissection uh, had any benefit in patients with melanoma. And in these uh, clinical trials, it showed that there was no improvement in overall survival uh, in patients with clinically no negative melanoma who underwent elective lymph node dissection. So because of this, we no longer do prophylactic lymph node dissections for patients with melanoma. So there was a period of time after the, those studies were published that we were only doing wide local excisions. We were not doing any lymph node dissection whatsoever. But it was the introduction of central lymph node biopsy by Dr. Morton at John Wayne back in the 1980s that we started to perform central lymph node biopsy as a standard of care for all patients with melanoma. And then we reserved um, completion lymph node dissection for patients who have um, positive central lymph nodes or those with clinically no neg uh, node positive um, uh, melanoma. So I can't overstate the importance of performing a central lymph node biopsy. Doing a central lymph node biopsy allows us to identify about 20% of patients who have microscopic disease in the regional nodes. So this was an important paper that was published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology. And this paper demonstrated that the central lymph node status is the strongest predictor of disease-free and disease-specific survival for patients with stage one and stage two melanoma. The MSLT1 is another important study. Uh, this study found that a pathologic analysis of the sentinel lymph node is the most important prognostic factor for melanoma. So this was an international prospective randomized controlled trial comparing wide local excision with sentinel lymph node biopsy compared to wide local excision with only nodal observation. And the study asked specifically among patients undergoing wide local excision for melanoma, the central lymph node biopsy with reflex completion lymph node dissection improved melanoma specific survival compared to nodal observation alone. So while the primary endpoint of the study um, did not show an improvement in melanoma specific survival, um, the disease free survival was actually significantly higher in, um, in, in the, particularly in the intermediate thickness melanoma group. Uh, so then the, the next log logical question after the MSCT1 results is, um, what if you take the patients who have a positive um, sentinel lymph node? Is there any benefit to doing a completion lymph node dissection, essentially moving all the lymph nodes versus watching the lymph node basin uh, with like ultrasound? So MSLT2 answers this question. So MSLT2, uh, this was actually recently uh, published, I think it was 2017, but in the study, they found no difference in melanoma-specific survival in patients with no positive sentinel uh, lymph node biopsy. 
um, for those treated with nodal observation. But one should note that those who did have a completion lymph node dissection, they did have improved local control of the regional lymph nodes, which means if you had a completion lymph node dissection, the chances of you having recurrence in a nodal basin is slightly lower than those who are monitored with um, nodal observation with ultrasound. So with that information, particularly in the area of immunotherapy, we have a lot of great drugs and uh, targeted inhibitors and so forth. We actually seldom perform sense, uh, completion lymph node dissection in patients with um, um, sentinel lymph node positive melanoma. There's very few select cases, but for the most part, we refer these patients for immunotherapy. So then uh, look at the trend in terms of how we manage the lymph node basin. I, we've seen a trend that we're doing less and less. So in the era of uh, immunotherapy, should we really still do central lymph node biopsy? I mean, we have such great drugs. I mean, it's, I mean and, we're, and we're having more drugs, more trials. Is there a thing of the past? Am I going to be out of a job? <laughs> and I would argue, no. I do believe there's a very critical role in doing central lymph node biopsy in patients with melanoma. So central lymph node biopsy is important for risk stratification. It is an important staging tool. Uh, it's necessary to help uh, accurately stage the patient and prognosticate um, a patient's melanoma. It can guide whether or not there's a role for adjuvant therapy and also guide whether or not a patient needs active nodal surveillance. For example, I did a central lymph node biopsy on a patient. It came back positive, was microscopic, patient stage 3A. So then I know, and the patient is going to get immunotherapy, but at the same time, as a surgeon, I'm going to continue to watch his nodal basin very carefully. Every four months, I'm going to get a scan to watch for any recurrence in a nodal basin. So as opposed to subjecting my patient to the morbidity of a completion lymph node dissection, I will watch the patient who will get immunotherapy. And it's been shown with the adjuvant immunotherapy, these patients have you know, excellent recurrence-free survival and overall survival. Um, but again, I do want to stress the importance of doing a central lymph node biopsy because about 15 to 30% of patients with clinically no negative melanoma will have a positive central lymph node. That again will upstage a patient to a stage three and it completely changes the patient's management. Um, and I do believe that failure to identify positive lymph nodes has pretty profound clinical consequences, uh, particularly decreased survival in those with nodal uh, recurrence. So you might ask, what are some histologic factors influence, um, that can influence a central lymph node being positive? Young patients tend to have a higher chance of having a positive lymph node. So even if a patient comes in with like a thin melanoma, I'm more inclined to recommend central lymph node biopsy for these patients. And, um, and, and, and just because of the fact that it, the data has shown that younger patients have a higher percentage of positive lymph nodes versus older patients. Um, Clark level greater than four. And tumor thickness, um, uh, the thicker the melanoma, the higher the chance of uh, an individual having a positive lymph node. All patients with a tumor thickness greater than one millimeter should and go a central lymph node. And there are select patients with a thickness between zero, zero to seven five, uh, so between zero, uh, sorry, 0 0.75 to one millimeter, she undergoes central lymph node biopsy. And, um, and I say this because, uh, you know, you would think that anything less than one millimeter is def by definition thin melanoma, but for these patients um, greater than 0.75 millimeter, they have a fairly reasonable chance of having a central lymph node metastasis. In this figure that was published in 2013, uh, for those patients, they have 8.4% uh, of having a positive central lymph node. And when they have a positive central lymph node, they actually do much worse. And other histologic factors include ulceration and mitosis. So I want to just briefly go over, like, what do I do as a surgeon when I plan to do a central lymph node biopsy? So before surgery, I've already scheduled a patient to undergo a preoperative lymphocentigraphy. This is basically an injection of radiocolloid tracer into, uh, around the melanoma site. And this allows me to map the lymphatic drainage and identify the central lymph nodes. So in this example, this is one of my patients who has a right ear melanoma. Um, uh, the radio color was injected, and you can see that a radiologist uh, marked um, the three lymph, central lymph nodes that I need to um, excise at the time of surgery. 
Sometimes the lymphatic drainage, are, is, it can be pretty straightforward for some sites. If you have a melanoma of the arm, it usually goes to the axilla. So you know that your lymph nodes would be um, in the axilla that will have to excise. For those uh, who have like, you know, a melanoma of the extremity, the central lymph nodes tend to drain to either the popliteal region or the groin. Where it gets kind of um, tricky is if you have a melanoma on the trunk, whether it's the back or the ad abdominal wall or chest, it can map anywhere. It can map to one axilla, it can map to both axilla, it can map even to the axilla and the groin. So the imaging before surgery is very important because it guides me, it allows me to know where I have to, where should I do my central lymph node biopsy? And it could be just one site, it can be two sites, it could be four sites. Um, and, and, and sometimes surgery can be longer for that reason because of where the, um, the lymph nodes are mapped prior to the surgery. So I do a dual tracer. Um, I do a uh, sensor lymph node biopsy. So on top of the radio uh, color tracer that's in, uh, injected prior to surgery, I actually inject um, lymph node zero, which is a type of blue dye around the melanoma. And then I identify the melanoma, not just, not only by using the radio colloid um, to identify um, what's hot, that's what it's called, versus in something blue. Um, and you can see in this example, um, you know, uh, blue dye is being injected around the melanoma. I use a gamma probe. I place the gamma probe right on top of where the central lymph node is, and it gives me a signal. The hotter the signal, the more likely that's the site where the, melano uh, the central lymph node is. I make an incision, and I find that blue lymph node that's hot. And I confirm that lymph node is hot using this gamma probe. You can see, you can see I take the specimen out. I put the, the lymph node outside the um, uh, uh, on the uh, operative table, and I check the signal, and this signal is 2,645. And I keep looking for lymph, uh, those central lymph nodes until there's no high signal left in the um, nodal basin. So then uh, I get a lot of uh, questions about Decision DX. Like, you know, this is a uh, tool that was developed to assess the risk of positive, positive central lymph node and recurrence independent from the traditional histologic factors. Um, the gene expression levels are determined using a proprietary gene expression profile test, um, looking at the expression of 31 genes. And this is a, they use this predictive algorithm model to determine whether the genetic profile of a, of a particular tumor is more strongly associated with either a low risk, which is class one, or a high risk, which is a class two. And included in this model are your standard um, uh, you know, factors such as age and histologic factors such as ulceration, mitosis, and so forth. And these are the essentially 31 genes that are looked at um, using the decision DX melanoma gene signature test. So let me give you a couple of examples of um, some of um, some I have sent to give you some sense of what it, what it looks like. And then I'll talk about how and if I use this um, tool. So this patient has a 0.6 millimeter thickness chest melanoma. So uh, basically, essentially stage uh, T1A. Um, this patient is a little bit, uh, he's 63. Um, the primary site is on the chest uh, and there's no uh, mitosis. So based on this, um, if you look on your on the left, it says the uh, risk of recurrence is fairly low as class 1A. And then on the right, the likelihood of positive central lymph nodes is, is about 2.6%, so quite low. Then you have um, this other patient with a 2.5 millimeter thickness scalp melanoma. Um, this patient is actually quite, uh, I think 98. Uh, and again, it's on the scalp. And this patient has a higher risk, is a class 2B, uh, slightly higher risk of recurrence. And the likelihood of having a positive central lymph node is 9.5. So interestingly, as you remember from the previous um, example, this patient has a class 2B and 2.5 millimeter thickness. This next patient has a thicker melanoma, it's 3.5 millimeter thickness. This patient has a class 1A uh, with a likelihood of having a positive central lymph node of 7.1%. In this last example, um, uh, 1.8 millimeter thickness melanoma, um, patient 77, his risk of recurrence is, um, uh, he's a class 1B, and uh, his uh, likelihood of having, having a positive central lymph node is 8.3%.
So right now, this is still uh, not routinely used um, by all physicians. And right now, there's a currently a multi-institutional registry trial um, that's ongoing. Uh, and to determine whether or not using this tool can aid decisions regarding the appropriateness of central lymph node biopsy. And this, the trial is called DECIDE. And the primary outcome is the association between the 31 GEP test results with surgical decision-making in patients with T1 or T2 melanoma who are eligible for central lymph node biopsy. But again, this is still not routinely used in clinical practice. Um, I, I request for it because I think when I sit down and I have a lengthy conversation with my patients, um, I still rely on the NCCN and to treat my patients. I don't deviate from you know, the NCCN. Um, the NCCN is class is evidence-based it, versus this is still a very new tool. But I do use it because it's, it can be helpful to inform patients about their risk, but it doesn't necessarily change my management. I was still, if a patient comes with a thick melanoma, I would still do a central lymph node biopsy because that's the recommendation um, by our uh, cancer guidelines. Um, I, I wanna just like uh, mention that the management of melanoma is a multidisciplinary like uh, field and um, it requires a team of doctors, like surgeons, uh, medical oncologists, dermatopathologists, dermatologists. And even for me as a surgeon in particular, I work very closely with a plastic surgeon to do oncologic um, reconstruction for melanoma. Um, so this is an example of a patient of mine who has a uh, scalp melanoma. I did a white liquid excision to ensure we have negative margins and I work closely with a plastic surgeon. This is uh, a case I did with one of our cranial plastic surgeons, Dr. Miles Pfaff, and uh, we did an immediate rotation of flap at the same time, uh, and the patient healed very well. Another example, this patient had a melanoma, in, a very deep, very aggressive melanoma in the um, uh, orbital rim. You know, we had to excise to have ne achieve negative margins, and as you can see on the uh, right, we did immediate reconstruction, the patient healed very nicely as well. And this is a very young patient of mine. She's like 39, I think. Um, she had a, also a very, very invasive melanoma um, that had to do a white local excision of the ear. We did an immediate skin graft, and she actually healed very nice, so you can barely see the scar. Um, so this is my contact. I'm happy to answer questions at the end, or you can, you're welcome to email me um, if you have questions. <laughs>